Okay. Okay, so, um... Welcome back to another Composing Live afternoon. So today in the studio, I am just going to make a little bit of music and um, we're going to start with an instrument and we're going to just go from there. So we'll see how we go. Um, I have already preloaded in an instrument and it's an African instrument and it's called a gheel. It sounds a bit like that. Uh, and it's actually a really lovely soft mallet woody instrument. And to be honest, I actually don't know what it looks like. I haven't looked it up. I just know what it sounds like. It's nice. So I figured we could do a, like a little bit of a melody or something. Something a little bit um, sort of percussive but melodic um, that we can flow through. Something that can just be a foundation for something else that comes after it. I don't know. We'll see what flows. So before I went live here, I was just mucking around with a few different um, uh, bits and pieces. Hey, Shivani. And so um, we'll just uh, see what comes. All right, so this is what I was sort of doing before I started. Just like a little rolling melody. I don't know, does it work for you? And it's just going, I'm, I'm playing in the key of, uh, uh, hang on, F, there you go. I'm playing the keyboard in the key of C and I've just transposed it electronically. Um, but the sound coming out that you'll hear is the key of F. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll actually just set the tempo and I'll record a little bit of that gear with the mallet, it's played with the mallet. Uh, mallet and uh, we'll just loop that a little bit and see what comes over the top of that. Nice. First I have to get our tempo right, so I'll just tap it in. So it's like this. Uh, roughly 108 BPM. That'll work for now. So with a click, there we go. And I'll start this at roughly um, the ninth bar. And that gives us a little bit of leeway if I ever wanted to change things later on. Give me a one bar lead in. So it's um, not exactly locked into the tempo, but I kind of like it like that. It gives it a bit of rawness. Um, again, what I always find that I play just ahead of the beat. So I'll just slide it over a little bit so it's right on the beat. Or it's close enough to that it makes sense. And I will lock the first and last notes in to the beat. And that means that I'll be able to loop it effectively. Just bear with me while I do this. Come on, move you. There we go. That's the first one locked in. And the last one doesn't matter because it happens before the end of the bar. Right, okay, so now I can trim and loop. I'm sorry you can't see what's going on on the screen, but too bad. Now I'll just give us a couple of minutes of this. And I can mute something a little bit later on if I want to. So I've now got around about um, two and a half minutes of that looped. And uh, it gives us a little bit of room to play with something. Now, I have also preloaded another instrument in there that I thought might work. I haven't tried it with this at all. We'll just see what happens. And it's another African uh, percuss percussive instrument. It's a kalimba. Um, and it's a high kalimba, and a kalimba is like a little thumb piano kind of thing, that, you know, like a little coconut shell with little metal things and you flick it with your fingernails. Normally they only have a few notes, but I'm going to pretend it has a full keyboard setting of notes because it sounds cool. Now, 
I'll just play along the actual loop here and see if I can get something of that kalimba to work along with it. Okay, so I can do that as a bit of a uh, augmentation to that rhythm. So what I'll do is I'll actually pull the volume down a touch so it's not quite so um, present. And I might even take some of the top end off it just to soften it. And to do that I'm going to use an EQ. Uh, And I think my mum has joined. Hi, mum. Just bear with me while I move that EQ to the correct channel. All right, so that softens it a touch. So I'll do a little bit of that. Um, we'll see where that goes. But I won't do it straight up. I'll let it go through a couple of iterations of that first. A couple of bars. in to the grid. So what are they? Eighth notes, I think. Which is a quaver. Okay. It's there. I will now loop that as well, just like I did with the kalimba. Ah, uh, Giel. Giel? 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 Look, someone correct me if that's wrong, I don't know. What's the African instrument called? G-Y-I-L. How do you pronounce it? Let me know. I think it's Giel or a Guile. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How's your day been anyway? Mine's been pretty good. I've been out to Mullumbimby for an electrical job. Been home to do some more music stuff. Bits and pieces here and there. All right, so I've got that all looped now. One more thing I might do, just as I might pan it left and right wearing headphones or listening to on a good stereo system, which you're probably not, you'll hear it. So the gill is now over here and the kalimba is over here. Excellent. It's opposite because you're looking at the screen. So I've panned that around. I'm not quite sure what else to do at the moment. Let's have a think. Something a bit smoother to still Oh, I think on those notes a little bit. I just, I just want to build that layer a little bit. I'm just going to close my EQ. Uh, Africa. They have a thing called a, a Cora. I'll just load it and see how it sounds. And it's, a, it's like a um, um, 
big stringed instrument that you pluck like a guitar but it's long and stands up um, so it sounds somewhat like a harp so that'll be nice strings does the chord I have? Is it four? One, two, three, four. I'm not sure. Ooh. I'll start at the beginning. Let's see what I can come up with. Another one called an ngoni. Try it. It might give me a go back to the chora. I just want I think so I might just take a tiny bit of the top end off it um, if it was a real instrument it might be perfectly fine but in the virtual instrument world we need to adjust things somewhat and I'll probably I'll we'll definitely do some more adjusting later on That's nice, a little roll there. So I've got to label it. What's it? That's Cora. Uh, was it Cora? Yeah, Cora. Labeling is very important when you're a uh, composer. Must make sure everything is in the right place at the right time. Okay, now I'm going to just record that. And I think I'll bring it in after the first couple of bars of the kalimba. So I'll just come in halfway through. perfectly matched in so I'm just going to lock in the first and last notes so I can loop it and I will do that just now okay first note is locked and that's right the last note doesn't need it and I will now Turn that into a loop. Two seconds. Okay, now I've got a couple of minutes of that. Cool. Hmm, now shall we depart a little bit from the percussive rolling stuff? So we see if we can come in with something a little bit longer. It gives us a bit of a melody. I'm not going into percussion just yet. I like to try and do percussion a little bit later on if I can help it. Because I figure that if you can get something that sounds good without percussion added, then the percussion will only help. It's 
not always accurate, but it's general and it's a sort of the approach that I have. I've got a nice vibe there. I think I will lock the Cora a little bit better than what it is. There is an option in quantizing. Quantizing is where you lock it into place, uh, where you don't um, do it fully. You can apply a certain strength to the quantizing. I'll apply maybe an 80% strength. So let's see how that turned out. Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, I'd love some suggestions as to what I can add. Elephants are African. Nathan Erskine, <laughs> drums are African. You're right, I can start adding drums. <laughs> but not yet, I told you. I'm not going to add an elephant mum. <laughs> what should I add? Should I go for another whole country? I don't know. Let's have a look. Now European instruments. What have we got in the uh, wind? Nah, I'm not going to go there. Far East. Got a, um, a dizzy flute. And I can just see how it goes. So this is a, um, an Asian instrument, an Asian flute. They're normally made out of wood, I believe. So let's see. No, that's Middle Eastern. I don't know, let me see how it sounds along with the other instruments. I'm not going to play a lion, Mum. version of that. Let's see. I do have a better version of it. Um, I'm just going to go away. Alright. It just takes a bit of time choosing choosing the right instrument. And then I just blow it. Some nice things happening there. Not overly um, accepting of that. There's another one called the Bar Woo. Let's have a look and see what that sounds like. Oh, that's lovely. Another Chinese flute. All right, that's what it is. We're, we're using the Bar Woo. I'm going to label it. Bar Woo. Who would have known we'd go Afro-Asian? Ooh. 
it's okay. Um, I need a bit more presence in it. resonant sounds there which I'll have to EQ out later on but for now um, I'm just going to record and just see what comes out Something's happened with my timing with the other things. I'll just press save, one of those other very, very important things to do. So my gear mallet has gradually drifted with each loop that I did because I did it wrong. It's not a fault of its own, it's a fault of mine. It's a shame, I like blaming other things. It's nice to blame technology, but sometimes it's not technology's fault. In fact, 99% of the time, it's not technology's fault. All right, that's good. Save that. And we're back in. So that was lovely. I do have to adjust one of the volumes there, but I won't do that just now. I just want to try and experiment with getting some more sounds in there. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy here. Uh, let's see. There's a few very nice Asian instruments in here, but I don't know if I want to go more Asian. There is a Middle Eastern um, instrument called a duruk, and it's another flute, and I want to see what that sounds like in here. So, um, I'll just add that now. Just in that soft, woody sort of, everything here except for the kalimba is a woody kind of an instrument. Uh, five, nine, and ten, bust that out. Oh yeah, you can hear the Persian Empire in that. The other thing I might do is I might actually make it so that you can play more than one of those at the same time.
Now I know that's not going to be perfect, but I'm just looking for a sound. So uh, let's see. That's the baru. The um, the duruk might be just a little too close to it. spread the bar we were across to the left and make the door go to the right not working for me I'm gonna go back to what I was before with the panning we'll be back to roughly center and I'm going to choose a different instrument because the uh, the duruk is just too similar to the bawe. Uh now what can I go oh I can go there's a very very nice set of um, singing uh, which takes a fair while to load so I'll just get it going now and it's um, it's like Mongolian, um, really rich voices, and it's from East West Sound. It's called uh, Voices of the Empire, and um, you'll hear in a minute. Oh, it's loading. It's just taking its time. I'm being impatient, um, but it's a very, very nice, uh, rich sound that I'm going to have to add a bit of reverb to. I think. Here it is. So Bulgaria, Serbia, Mongolia and beyond, that's uh, the location that they say that this stuff is from. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a reverb while I'm waiting, just anticipating that I'll need it. We'll see how we go. Gavin Clark, haven't seen you for years. How good is that? <laughs> yeah, alright, that might work. without the barwoo flute. Let's just give that a go. It's part of the process, sometimes you just gotta pull things out. articulation all right okay we'll try that instead and I'm going to record and I'm just going to see what lays down and we'll see if it works but it's starting to work a little bit there I might even add a bit of babu later on it might sound different we'll see how we go I better label it um,
she does that funny sound of the open mouth initially. And keeps it going. Just try one more articulation of that. That's better. undo that recording. How is it so far? I don't know. It's sort of turning out well. Go back to the ooze. Okay. Alright, let's start here. So I'll just shuffle it over a tiny, tiny bit. I think the voice is good. Um, what I might do is I might just chop that there, mute that, and bring the bar we're in a little bit later on. So... something anyway. Now, just to add a little bit of English sound to it, I'm going to go one of my favourites and get Old Grandma's Piano. I don't know if it's going to sound any good at all. Um, but we'll have a look and see, hey? And it's a really nice um, piano. What's it called? It's called a... Braunschweig piano, Braunschweig upright, human fingers, and I'm going to give you a uh, maybe just a 10 layer. Just wait till that loads, and I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to that as well. I will work out this crackle later on and find out what the heck is going on so it doesn't annoy you even later on.
So it just gives it a little bit of glue down the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll play that in now and just see what comes. I'm just trying to add a bit of glue. Um, I'm going to turn this microphone off then on again just quickly. Bear with me. And I'll see if that fixes the issue. Okay, so I have just tried unplugging and plugging my microphone back in again. Unfortunately, to uh, no great avail, which you will have heard, this is part of the joys of um, doing what I do. Oh, oh, crackle just went away. <sighs> All right, so we have a little bit better of an idea now on how this will go. Okay, I'm going to add some piano. Sorry about the boringness of that. So let's just play in some piano. I'm going to pull the reverb out of it, actually. I've got a fair bit of reverb on that piano. I'll pull it right back so it's a bit dry. If you don't know what reverb is, it's the sound of an echo after an instrument or a, any kind of sound plays. It's like the, the echo, echo, echo. It's the tail end of a sound that you hear in the room around something. And here I am talking while I'm trying to be recording and it's not doing what I'm supposed to, so I'll start that again. of that instrument down further into the spectrum. Just a little bit of something to go off there. I'll just press stop. I am going to quantize that piano simply because it's the definition isn't um, necessarily needed to hear 
all those little details of where the note lands. Um, and the reason I am quantizing instead of leaving it as is, is because I actually want to hide it behind the front notes of the mallets so that you don't actually hear where the notes start and finish. So you'll hear it a little bit, but it'll be hidden. So the psychoacoustic effect of other louder instruments being across it. What I might even do to increase that psychoacoustic effect is just nudge it behind the notes. Just one tiny little bit and it puts it in the shadow, timing speaking. And what that does is it makes your brain think that you can't hear that note so much when it, was, when it first starts and you notice it milliseconds later. So that's working as a pedal note. I'm quite happy with that. That's good. Now I'm going to label that piano because I forgot to. Piano, MIDI, wave. And I'm going to add something really sort of spacious to um, fill the, the high end void. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use. Um, I might use the Vral Grad, Vral Grid. And just try and find some sort of evolution there that works. Now the Viral Grid is just a set of sort of bellows, in a sense. Hmm, I'm not sure. Sounds sort of trumpety. I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch the grad. I'll go back to an Albion sort of tundra orchestra and add uh, high woods, high woods. Yeah, why not? Yes, replace that. Again, I just gotta wait for the instrument to load. It's part of the fun of this um, computer. Eventually, one day, things will load instantly. And some people have those systems, and I'm jealous, infinitely. <laughs> but it's the way it goes. Thanks for joining me, people. Anyway, it's been uh, nice to have some company doing this. Now, let's see. Long notes. It's a bit more predictable. Still soft and woody. That's just wind. It has a little bit more character to it. Mm. All right, let's see. I think I'll do that. So, high woods. High woods. Don't forget to leave your comments if you have something that you would like done or um, don't like in here, think I should change. <laughs> be brutal, be ruthless, just say. I'm quite happy to hear it. Um, and I'm very open to suggestions. So, I like these woods. So I'm going to lay them down. And I'm going to do it from somewhere near here. Not yet. Give it a moment. 
planet. Okay, ready? I have to do this again. Now I know I'm sort of going to be around about there. They're a little loud, is why. And I want to be able to add some more dynamics. Hmm, there's not a whole lot of dynamics there. There's a little bit. I think we've gotten to a fairly nice point. I don't know if I need to go much further. Um, just for, you know, this has only taken 50 minutes to get to this point. From nothing, no ideas, to uh, this. So let's go from the beginning to the end. Um, where are we? Yeah. Let's just have a bit of a listen. Love your feedback. If you've got any comments, please let me know. rolls out to the end I just want to uh, talk to you about my uh, patreon now patreon is a place where you can go and support this uh, live video work and my music work uh, and what I have is there um, 
absolutely free option where you can review these videos, uh, these live composing sessions for free. Um, but the other thing that I do have, let me just let that play while I talk because it's cool. I like it. The other thing that I do have is a $1 per month membership. That's the only tier that I have. And the reason I haven't done what other Patreon people have and put different, more costly tiers up is because I actually just want to give this stuff away or pretty much give this stuff away. I still need some support to help pay for a few of the ongoing costs. So $1 a month is pretty much nothing. And what you get for that is a full mastered version of every single one of these guys that I produce. Um, so I'll spend a little bit of time after this and I'll go through and I'll just tidy bits up, tighten it up. If I need to add little bits on the beginning and end just to make things slightly better, I will. Then I'll put it through various EQs, compressors and whatnot to master it to good listening levels and uh, high production levels. And what I'll do is I'll spit it out at 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, which is film ready, cinema ready. And um, you can use that if you're likely to use it in a film. You're free to use it in a film. You get that. And you get every single one of them. One dollar a month. Um, please head on over to patreoncom Nosseter and you'll see everything over there. Um, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, um, keep on coming over and seeing me over here at uh, Facebook. And um, yeah, I, I just really love doing this composing thing. And having you here on the other end helps me to be accountable. I was saying to Sil the other day, I often will come in here and I'll start something about halfway and I think eh, don't like it you know if, if I get to a point where the bar where it's just sounding a bit crap I'll just say no nah, headphones off and I'll just walk away but with you there the accountability is much greater and I just have to keep going it's like this is what I'm doing I've got one hour and I'm going to create a piece of music with you and so um, I'm going to continue doing this as much as I can it's not going to be every day but it, uh, it's going to be more than once a week, hopefully three, four times a week. And we'll see how we go with that. And I'm always going to be posting it on Facebook live like this, so you can see it as it happens, which is what you're doing right now. Um, and um, I'll also be put, putting those videos up on YouTube, so you'll see them on my YouTube channel as well. Just search Steve Nosseter there or Sound Life Audio. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. Anyway, thank you so much uh, for you guys who came over and... Um, and watched me live and for anyone else who's watched this after it's been live as well really appreciate it have a lovely evening we'll see you next time i'll just wave until it stops <laughs>